What are some of the I don't know, features or functions or services that are sort of evolving out of IPv6, uh, specifically uh, mm -hmm. you know, for NTT? Well, one of the things, and uh, this is a, actually a good example because it's a real-world production commercial example of mm -hmm. an IPv6 application, is um, in Japan uh, in July of 2007, so about 11 months ago, NTT actually offered a commercial earthquake warning system which is based on our IPv6 multicast network. Mm -hmm. And, and what, it, what it is, it's actually a partnership with a, with a couple of other organizations in Japan and also the Japan Meteorological Agency. Mm -hmm. And the JMA has a, a pretty dense mesh of, uh, of, of sensors in Japan that detects seismic activity. Mm -hmm. And when an event takes place, um, with this uh, mesh of sensors, they can triangulate the uh, approximate epicenter oh. of, of a quake, of an event, and the approximate magnitude and the direction of the wave front. Oh. So uh, this has been in place for some time, but what this warning system does is JMA actually takes this information and it takes them about two seconds to compile it and analyze it and they hand that information to one of our servers which uses NTT's IPv6 multicast network to distribute this information to people that subscribe to the service. Hmm. So for example if you're working at your desktop um, on a Windows box there's a service that runs in the background and that would pop up a window and it would say uh, you have approximately eight seconds until a magnitude 5.0 quake is going to hit where you're located at. Wow. So it doesn't sound like a lot of time, but in a society where people are trained how to handle these sort of events, uh, a couple seconds can really make a major difference. That's huge. Um, and I know you were talking about Tokyo earlier and whether I'd yeah. uh, been out there. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple weeks ago, I was in Tokyo, and uh, th this system's been working uh, uh, w without any sort of problems for the last year, but I know the, the week prior to when I was there, they said 200 uh, kilometers north of Tokyo there was actually a magnitude 6.8 event which gave people about three seconds via this service in the city of Tokyo to prepare. Hmm. So, uh, and what kind of an impact did that have? Those three seconds. What did they do with the three seconds? Well, yeah, just uh, basically prepared uh, mentally. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, get down under the desk if, if right, need right. be, and things like that. Huh. So, and, and there's also a lot of research going on, and some of these things are actually in place now, and some of them they're looking at. But there's research on how to how to proactively do other things. For example, take elevators and stop them, and open the doors. Um, uh, close the valves on gas mains, hmm. um, if need be, uh, activate tsunami barriers right. and things like that. So there's a, a lot of different applications that are being looked at as well as different ways to notify people. Right. Uh, there's currently a service uh, where people are notified via mobile phone um, and then there's other foreseeable applications of public address systems and, and television things and stuff like that. Like that. Correct. Yeah. Wow. So how is it that V6 um, enables this early mm -hmm. warning detection system in the sense that, you know, could V4 have done it? Yeah. Yeah, I get that question a lot and, and usually the answer is uh, a lot of the things and, and, and applications that have demonstrated over the years at various trade shows, um, V4 is, could be could usually be utilized to do such a thing. Uh, it just usually doesn't work very well under V4. It's a lot more difficult to set up mm -hmm. or it's a lot more difficult for an IT manager to administer. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the thing that really makes this nice for V6 is all these devices have uh, globally routable IP addresses. Right. So there's not the problem in V4 where NAT's widely deployed and, and NAT breaks that end-to-end -end model of the internet. Yeah. Um, also, uh, multicast has been around a long time in the V4 world, um, but it was never widely deployed. With V6, there's some enhancements built in for multicast that allow for scoping. And these sort of features just make uh, IPv6 a real natural solution for this type of application. So, yeah, it, it, it doesn't use a V4 network. Could it be uh, re-engineered to do that? It, it, it is possible, right. but it, it just works better and it's a natural fit for IPv6.